Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the time and place for the special events team meeting. And my name is Kelly Frank. I'm with the city clerk's office sitting in for special events chair Maria Week. Um, just a quick reminder, this meeting is live streamed. So please use your microphones so people on Zoom can hear you. And mind your P's and Q's, channeling my inner Maria here. So don't say anything that you wouldn't want your grandmother to hear. <laughs> And we'll go ahead with introductions, um, starting with ACHD. Oops, yeah. John Wasson, Ada County Highway District. Debbie White, Ada County Highway District. Oh, and by the way, the only thing my grandmother wants me to say is, yes, ma'am. Perfect. She doesn't want no map, just yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Conrad McDaniel, Republic Services. Vince Vergara, City of Boise Parking. Leslie Pedroza, Valley Regional Transit. Sierra Padilla Hewitt, Downtown Boise Association. Summer Altieri, Boise Parks and Rec. Camille Aiken, State County Paramedics. Jesse Tappert, Boise Fire. Jeff Nia, Boise Police. Matt Kovalenko, Boise Police. Taylor Gomez, Police Events Admin. Rachel Holford, City of Boise Emergency Preparedness. Thank you. And we do have participants online. Um, City of Boise Public Works. Hi, Ed Graves, Public Works. Uh, Boise Fire Department. Joe Dathman, Boise Fire Department, Operations. Thank you. And Boise City Risk Management. Sydney Murphy, City Risk Management. Excellent. And uh, also from the clerk's office. Good morning, Jamie Heinzerling with the Boise City Clerk's Office. Thank you. All right, our first event presenting this morning is Terry Hobelheinrich with the Zeitgeist Half Marathon. Thank you. My, before I get started, I need to make sure that you can, can everyone hear me? Let's see, not, okay, great, thank you. Um, also, another thing before I get started into this, um, it's been three years since I've presented. Uh, we haven't held the event in person since 2019. Um, it, it'll help me to understand how many people have actually heard me present before, because it's been a lot of years. And I guess maybe a better question is who, who has not? That might be more. <laughs> okay. Okay. So a number of them. Okay, good. So um, I will hopefully cover all the details and obviously you'll ask me questions if I don't. So I'm Terry Hobel Heinrich. I'm the race director for Zeitgeist Half Marathon. Uh, Zeitgeist is a fundraising event for Racing Unlimited. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we raise funds for medical research for to find treatments and a cure for polycystic kidney disease. That's a disease that affects about 400,000 Americans, probably 1.2 million people around the world. Um, and it obviously involves kidney failure. So um, so the nonprofit was created in 2002, um, and the race was held starting in 2002. So we've held it since then on this course, uh, since then, with the exception of the, the COVID years of 2020 and 21. So, um, the, uh, for those of you who have heard me before, much of this is the same. Um, the course, like I said, starts and finishes in Optimus Park, uh, on Hill Road Parkway. Uh, it's set for Saturday, November 5th. And uh, the course, it's a heli course, and it goes uh, essentially from Optimus Park on Old Hill Road, Siemens Gulch Road, through Hidden Springs, Dry Creek Road, Cartwright Road, Pierce Park Road, back onto Hill Road, and, and Old Hill Road, and back into the park. So it's a, a loop, or I believe they call it a, a dog lake, technically, as that course goes. Um, the, um, let's see, as far as, you know, the, the course hasn't really changed. What is different is that we, uh, as instructed by ACHD and Boise city is to develop a, have a traffic control plan developed. Um, we have done that and we've met with ACHD once, um, we've got another iteration in front of them now and wait to see if things need to be changed or updated or whatever. Um, and what is different about that um, is that 
we will have certified flaggers at the intersection. Well, first of all, at the park uh, on Hill Road, there'll be two flaggers there. And then at the intersection of Hill Road and Siemens Gulch Road, there will be four certified flaggers. Um, and that part is different, uh, you know, and new, I should say. Um, also, what is different about, or it's the same with our race, is that there is a road closure from uh, essentially Hill Road and Siemens Gulch all the way up to Hidden Springs. It's the northbound lane. Um, it is closed only for a period of about three hours uh, while the athletes uh, uh, walk and run over that. Um, and uh, with the 10 a.m. start, that is uh, with the race, that's approximately 10 a.m. to about 1 p.m. is when that road closure occurs. And then we pick up the traffic uh, cones from Siemens Gulch back over the hill, back to uh, Siemens Gulch and Hill Road, and then that is open. Um, that um, there also is a, is a detour uh, that we have which there's a variety of ways that people can get to Hidden Springs area. They can still access through uh, through uh, Dry Creek Road, through uh, Pierce Park, and from uh, Cartwright Road. There's a variety of ways there, so there, there's a way around there. Uh, with that one lane closure, the landfill traffic is still uh, open all the time. Um, the only difference is that they can from the south they can come up in the landfill and then they can come back out they can make a right turn only and go down they can come into the landfill from the north from hidden springs but they would need to depart during that road closure they need to make a right turn and turn south and go down the hill and that's like i said a three-hour period there um we we have hired um three staff from the Boise Motor Escort. And then I typically, and I had a call into Lieutenant Nia about um, possibly having either Boise Police and then, or Ada County Sheriffs um, have two officers that would also assist in that as far as uh, being on the course and uh, keeping things safe with that. So I need to check in to see if, if that's a possibility. And if not, you know, whether it's two Boise Police or two, deputy sheriffs or whatever, we, we need to confirm that yet. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on the course. Um, there is a lot more with the traffic control plan. There's a lot more road work ahead signs, um, quite a bit more signage there. Um, and then we also have uh, some of our own, uh, which are road works ahead, or not road, uh, caution runner ahead, which is um, not, not an official, Highway sign, but it's it's informative to let them know. Um, as far as letting the community know about that, we put signs up. These are like four feet by two foot sandwich boards that we put up a week in advance or all around the course um, that let the community know that there is a uh, an event going to go on the next Saturday's like Geist Half Marathon. We have a little flyer there on that sign, but we also post it on our on our website, and then. Um, try and let the Hidden Springs community know, and, and if they're willing to post it, uh, let their community know. I know in the past they wanted us to pay, but um, uh, but that's that's the other way how we let people know that the event is going on. Um, so let's see, we've covered, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on the course. Oh, we have six water stations. Um, and that's also where we have the six portable toilets on the course. Um, the rest of them are in the park. Uh, and with regard to medical, we have volunteer medical staff that will be at the, uh, the finish, but also at the aid stations along the course. And then Valley Wide React is also there uh, to provide communications. Um, and as far as there's also, you know, cell phone communications to call 911 if there's an emergency. Uh, law enforcement would ha presumably have radios if there's an emergency there, um, but hopefully that covers all the communication in terms of if there's any issues. We've been fortunate that uh, so far, it's not really wood, but uh, um, we haven't had any serious medical issues, but hopefully we are prepared if that were to happen. Um, there is no risk of it being hot. Well, I shouldn't say that. With climate change, um, there hasn't been any risk of it being hot. Uh, usually, if anything, it's cold. 
um, which is relatively easy to address unless we have a 35 degree rain, but I have a plan for that if we ever do. <laughs> Having run enough races in my past that um, I know what happens in 35 degree rains, so with athletes. Um, I think that covers all of the course items. If not, we'll get back to that if there's something I've missed. Uh, uh, let's talk about with the park when the athletes um, that Saturday morning, well, first of all, there's some setup on Friday. Um, Saturday morning, packet pickup starts at eight, race starts at 10. Um, we have a post-race party uh, in the park on the grass and uh, we serve a post-race meal. Uh, this is a part where um, I don't have details nailed down. It's, it's a very different world after COVID. Um, and I don't have the same vendors that I've had. So all I have confirmed at this point is um, a hot soup to be served um, with uh, Sunray Cafe out of Hyde Park. Um, I'm still, like I said, trying to confirm who the beer vendor is and uh, probably other foods will be stuff that we can find packaged foods that are um, you know, prepackaged to give away. We don't really have, in, in the past we've had a uh, full hot meal and, and that's, that's just not gonna happen this year. So, but we'll have hopefully something there. Um, the, uh, let's see, we will have amplified sound. We will not have a band this year. Um, I guess incidentally related to a lot of this is on the attendance estimate was based on 2019, 580 finishers athletes. Um, we're not gonna have that this year. Um, you probably know uh, races in general, are, attendance is down dramatically. Um, as I was told by an individual vendor who sells to races nationally said, you're doing good if you're at 75% and could easily be 65. Just checking some numbers with uh, Fit One based on a couple of years ago, I think they were at 65% when they just held it here just this past weekend. So I would be pleased if we were only at 65%. So, um, so it's gonna be a lot fewer people. So, um, as far as with the park, uh, we have a number of canopies. I know I put on the applications some 10 by 20s and then uh, a couple of 10 by 20s and then mostly five by 10s or 10 by 10s. Um, I'm not, uh, I guess we'll see with what the food, whether we even need a 10 by 20. Um, they're not staked, they're held down with water jugs. Um, and uh, we typically don't, well, the athletes are not, allowed into those. That's really more for staging with the food and things like that. Um, although it is at the, at the finish with um, uh, things like with t-shirts and, and the, the timer has a, has a 10 by 10, things like that. So it's um, generally there aren't any sides to, well, there might be sides if there's a breeze, but again, it's trying to keep people out of where they're staging with like the food and things like that. So um, the, uh, Let's see, as far as with the, oh, the, the trash, we, uh, we collect that ourselves and we just take it up to the landfill. We're two miles away. It's a lot cheaper to just drive it up there and just do it ourselves. Recycling, uh, pretty much is just cardboard that we can recycle and we take that back, quite frankly, to our house. There just isn't that much. The other food related materials, we can't really recycle. Um, and so there, there just isn't much to do there. Um, let's see, as far, let's, let's talk about with the beer. Uh, we have a beer garden, it's fenced. You see, a, you should hopefully see a map there that is, um, uh, it's a five foot tall fence. It's a round pin, essentially livestock fence there. Uh, we have hired security, uh, uh, the professional security, I'm trying to remember their name right now, that, that staffs that entrance. There's, there's two entrance exits, well, two exits, I should say, one, one entrance. Um, and then that's where the, the uh, security staff checks the IDs. Um, what we do is um, they need a wrist wrap to get in. Um, and first of all, they need a wrist wrap to be a volunteer finish so we know that they're actually part of the event. And then they have a wrist wrap after showing ID to get in there. And then they get two beers 
um, it's a 16 ounce cup, probably it's a 14 ounce serving. And that's, that's what they get. They mark the, the mark, the, the, uh, the wrist strap. Um, now if we have a beer sponsor that will serve and pour, then they would apply for the permit through the city of Boise. Um, but if that doesn't come through, then the other option that we have is to, uh, pursue a, a permit through the Idaho state police with, through the charitable donation, which my understanding then is, that, well, and we've done this at our other event with in Ketchum is then uh, it's on us. So what we would plan to do then it's, it's our responsibility and we would still have the same fence, the same security, the same wrist straps, same ID check, everything's the same. It's not going to change. It's just a question of um, where is the, the alcohol license coming from. So, um, and I hopefully have that. I, I really want that nailed down in a few days because <laughs> I, it's, um, I've got a lot to do on that. So, um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's any other topics that I might, oh, uh, insurance. I know that, um, we need plan on getting it probably through the USA track and field, um, trying to nail down a couple of uh, details there, um, but the same thing where the, uh, the various government entities are, are named as well, as far as with the uh, third party liability insurance. And hopefully that won't come at the last minute. I know they renew their insurance on November one, and that's always a nail biter for us um, to get that because obviously I can't get permits from all of you till you guys get insurance. Um, let me just look through here. Um, I can't think of anything else that you might want to see. I'm sure you will tell me. Um, does anyone have any questions for me, concerns? Thank you, Terry. It was great to see you again. Uh, we all are a little rusty um, still from <laughs> coming off the pandemic. So we definitely will bear with you. We appreciate um, you doing your due diligence to get the things in place that you need. So we definitely understand there, but um, just continue to communicate with each of us and um, the areas and we'll be able to assist you. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and go around the room real quick and let each agency speak to um, their department. Okay, thank you. Hey, Terry. Hi. So I did get your uh, your revisions. Um, I've looked at them. I've approved everything and sent it back to Kelly. So um, as far as ACHD, we're, we're good to go. Um, you are planning on pulling all the traffic control devices and having everything picked up before Monday, right? I mean, the roads will all be open right after the race, but Monday there won't be anything left on the road. Yes, well, so in the past, and I would expect that we would have it all removed on Saturday. Okay. Um, the only, the only caveat that I have thought about, because I had recalled a comment from one of you that sometimes that's an issue with that, having that stuff out there. If for some reason um, I don't have enough volunteers to do that, and I either pull that on Sunday or at the worst, I figured turn the signs because if it's just me tearing everything down which we haul all the equipment in ourselves. It's not, we don't, the race doesn't have the money to pay a traffic control organization right. to all that labor to do it. So we do it ourselves. The worst I envisioned is turning it to the side of the road so no one can see it. But the plan is historically we have removed it on Saturday and it's off uh, probably an hour or two after the courses, after the race okay. is ended. Because we need all the devices picked up before um, the first you know, by um, Monday morning, the okay. first work day. Well, then I just make sure it happens on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, just, just that's the, that's our policy. That's just where we're at with that. Okay. But it's just, you know, if, if we say, yeah, you can, you know, because then if we, if we allow it for you, then there's others that are having 15 billion okay. signs and, I'll have and it off then. downtown Boise and it never, yeah, it, okay. it ends up being a mess. I, I think it will be okay. I'll just, yeah. it'll, it'll be off. Yeah. It'll yeah. Be done. So, so like I said, it's, it's, 
almost always yeah. been. The other question I had is on Siemens Gulch, you know, after the runners go through Siemens Gulch and they turn onto Hidden Springs, are you going to have a tail, tail vehicle to, to for behind the last runner? Yeah, that was a plan. I, I wanted to see about having uh, the React with the communications have one of them. Yeah. So could you could you open up Siemens Gulch except for the flagging at Hill Road after the last one has started up Dry Creek or gone through, you know, so that, you know, so that Siemens Gulch gets open sooner? We, we could. My concern is the safety with the volunteers picking up those cones. We've tended to go in reverse. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But if you get a call, you know, says, okay, the, all the last runner has reached Hidden Springs and is headed out to Dry Creek, right. then you could open up Siemens Gulch from Hill Road, you know, down to, you know, up to uh, Hidden Springs because there are no, because you don't have runners coming back on that again. But right, we, we could, but I, as I said, with picking up the traffic control equipment, uh -huh. we typically would have a vehicle. Uh, what we've done is we've had it in the closed lane picking it up in right. reverse. Yeah. But I thought what could. you're saying is I, I don't want to open it up to traffic if they're in the middle in there. No, the but you'd lane, be so. doing the same thing. You, you wouldn't open it up until you got the devices picked up. Oh, I thought you wanted it opened up as soon as the athlete was gone. We well, after they're done, then you could have somebody pick up the candles and then open it up. You wouldn't open it up while, yeah. While well, you're picking well it that's up. what we've always, yeah. we've always done is we've, is once those candles are picked up on then, then, yeah, then, yeah. then it's, I'm just saying, yeah, you're not going to wait until after everybody's at Optimus Park. Oh, gosh, no. That's what, uh, no, that's, those are picked sorry, up. that's no, what I was. No, no, no. Okay. That I was my saying. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's picked up. Okay. Um, we're good. Yeah. That's picked up immediately. We yeah, want that. We're good. We okay. Thank that. you. So, okay. So, <clears throat> Terry, I'd ask that you reach out to Lisa Ahrens. She's the manager for Hidden Springs Township so that she can get the word out to, all the residents at Hidden Springs, whether they listen to her or not, is unimportant. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but uh, after this meeting, I'll give you her email okay. and her phone number. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, Terry. Hi. Uh, I did have questions about trash and recycling, but you answered them all. Okay. So, good presentation, thank you. Okay, thanks. Terry, it was good talking to you the other day. I'm Vince. Yeah. We share the same hometown, right? Yep, yep we do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're set to go on parking. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Nothing from us. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Terry. Hi. As this is outside of the downtown core, we're all set for the Downtown Boise Association. Okay. Hi, Terry. How are you? Good. Um, We'll just touch base later this today or this week so we can check us off your list. Okay. So we're good for Optimus. Other than, and, uh, yeah, with the city with insurance, I'm getting that. And that we always know. We know that's coming. Yeah. So don't okay. worry on our. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one that has to wait within that time frame for insurance. So we're good there. Okay. Um, Sydney's online too. So we'll refer to her in just a second. Okay. Um, Central District Health does need your notification of event form. Yes. Um, I can send you a link to that if you need it. Okay. And I, I tried to get a hold of um, t -t Natasha, but she wasn't in that one day okay. when I called. But uh, uh, and it was called. Tell me what it is. It's a notification. Notification. It's of pretty simple. Form. But, okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. then um, we did reach out to Ada County Sheriff's Office, um, which I'll have emergency services connect with that. I just wanted to make sure that they knew that. Um, because it is a little bit outside of the city jurisdiction, we're just kind of overlapping, same with the Hidden Springs comment there. Um, and just a note team that uh, this race is the same day as the Veterans Parade, right. and there's also a home game. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that game is at night. But. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I, you guys should be good I, I and done by then. I can't wish but. that it, you know, because it, it, yeah. Long day for um, resources. <laughs> so, yeah, just yes. bear with us on that, but I'll let um, the team take care of the details on that part of it. Okay. I saw your medical plan was attached. It looked good. So you're good for medical. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Um, it doesn't look like you're going to have any food trucks for this event. No, okay. we, we, we never have. Okay. And no, you have a small number of tents. So I think I have everything I need. I have no, no concerns. Thank you. Okay. 
My turn. Uh, so yeah, uh, we, we're going to have Sergeant Kamalinga talk to you about the motorcycles to help your event. That is the issue that we're running into is that we do have the Veterans Day Parade basically about the same time as this event. Uh, and we're short on motorcycle officers right now. And oh, okay. so it's, tr I'm trying to evaluate the need for us. Um, so Sergeant Convalinga will probably follow up with you here after the meeting. Um, we might have to have this new resource out to Ada County for this, but we'll discuss offline. Okay. And uh, I mean, the we already talked about the alcohol as well. So. The, the other thing as I can, I can see, I, I, I don't know how many Boise Motor Escort are there, but, um, you know, I can just see what that is, but yeah, let's. Yeah. I, th I think this year a little different now they have certified flaggers as well. That does add to the safety factor. So we can talk offline about that. Um, but that's kind of the reason why we're juggling some balls in the air right. on this, on this date. I'm, I'm hoping for a night game, frankly. So, <laughs> <laughs> because it really affects, <laughs> it affects us as well. Cause even some of the volunteers in the past, we had, one main volunteer and the only way I got him to come and help was he set up his great big screen TV when we were tearing down so they could watch and I just had to allow him to kind of watch as they tore stuff down because it's like, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do so but uh, so. Good morning, Terry. Nice to see you back. Super excited to have your event back up and running. So yeah, several, thanks. several years of this. This is awesome. Um, do have a couple of questions and I am going to ask our team to do a safety and security meeting and we'll do that offline with you. And I just want to cover some of the stuff um, that we've kind of been putting out to other events, especially races um, with the medical stuff. It looks good, but we can also kind of beef up your first aid tents with some information that you can post in there. So if they do have to call 911, they have a immediate um, visibility of location to provide dispatch. And then we also have the app that's called What Three Words, which um, you can type that in and it'll give you a grid. And our dispatch currently has that grid. So it gives them a very specific location to find that person. And since we don't have medical um, up there with you, it's going to be a little bit of a time to get up there to that location. So we want to be able to get there with that um, accurate location as quickly as possible. Okay. Is that something that you could email at those types of things? Yes, absolutely. We absolutely can do. And we'll just do like a quick run through. Plus we have so many new people. I'd like for them to get a look at the course as a whole and just kind of go through those different options. Um, and then, um, understand where you're going to have react and where both voice motor escorts are going to be. And then we can bring Ada County Sheriff's office to that meeting as well to discuss who's going to do what for you. Actually, it does bring up a question with regard with the, is the uh, fire department services in Hidden Springs, is that staffed full-time or is it's that? staffed by Eagle Fire. Oh, it's okay. Which we are happy to include them in that conversation too. The, the idea is if you had something major happen, all resources have the exact same plan and understanding of your course schedule and instructions. Okay. Okay. I'll get that out to you probably later today. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We'll go online to uh, Public Works, Ed Graves. Yeah, hi, Terry. Welcome back. Thanks. Um, just a quick question. Um, so, yeah, thank you for the trash and recycling plan. Um, just to make sure you do not need to borrow any trash boxes or recycling bins, correct? Uh, we have our own trash containers um, and the recycling it's since we're only just cardboard, I, I, there really isn't any. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah, I just I wanted just... to make sure that you were, you were, you were covered um, on that. Yeah. And then also, yeah, my only other comment is um, and this is just not with your event, but if you're serving beer um, you know, Maybe not this year, but definitely we're trying to get away from the plastic cups that are just a, a one and done kind of deal. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, if you could look into cans or some sort of reusable cup that the runners are provided or can bring or something. But, um, yeah, I won't take up any more time of this of this meeting. But, yeah, I just appreciate you putting this event on. It's, it's always a great one. Um, and, yeah, just keep that in mind as far as trying to move away from any of those single use plastic cups or plastic items in, in general. Okay. But that's, that, that's all I've got, Terry. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks. Thank you. BC Detman with Boise Fire. Yeah, Terry. Hey, uh, just to answer your concerns, we have uh, automatic aid agreements with Eagle up there. So your coverage for fire and uh, first responders should be relatively seamless. But in the future, we could definitely include them. When we go through your safety and security meeting with uh, Rachel, we'll, we'll uh, get you that uh, what three words pulled up. Eagle's very uh, good at using it, and it'll add some safety to your participants as well as your uh, volunteers that are there. But uh, anyway, that's all I got. I'll see you at the uh, uh, safety and security one. Okay, thanks. Thank you. And Sydney with City Risk Management. Hi. We'll just need your proof of insurance when you receive it. I did send you an email just so you have it on your radar. Okay, thank you. Great. All right, well, Terry, thank you. Um, great to see you again. Um, we'll be back in touch just to get the fine details um, solidified. And if you need anything, let us know. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next up uh, we have online. Uh, Jordan Eggers with Ten Barrel Brewing for the Pray for Snow event. Good morning, Jordan. Hey, good morning, guys. Glad to be back. Uh, I see some new faces um, and some old faces, so I'm glad we're back to throwing events. And Terry, before you leave, brother, if you need a beer sponsor for your event, uh, I'd be more than happy to, or happy to help you out. So um, I'll just connect with you <laughs> and uh, we can donate some beer to your event, man. Would love to help out. I can email you Jordan's information from 10 barrel if you'd like. <laughs> Perfect. So we'll, we'll be in contact then. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Terry. Well, so, Hey guys. So for you, uh, those of you who don't know me, my name is Jordan Egger. I, um, I work on behalf of 10 barrel brewing company. I'm the events coordinator for the company. And, you know, we're here to talk about our Pray for Snow event. And this is, I believe, our seventh year of Pray for Snow and um, our third year of it being on Ninth Street in front of our pub. So, Kelly, if I can share my screen, if that's all right. Let me see here. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Cool. Two seconds. Cool. All right, guys, so this is Pray for Snow. It's a signature event for 10 Barrel. Uh, we bring it to Boise every year. It's a great uh, signature event for the community, free event, all ages. Um, this year, it's gonna, the event's going to take place on October 29th. Uh, it's a, that's a Saturday uh, from 5 to 10 p.m. Oh, let's see. Cool. So it's going to be located on 9th Street between Jefferson and Bannock. So right next to our 10 barrel pub location. Um, this is the third year, I believe, of it being on 9th Street. Um, and it's like I said, 5 to 10 p.m. We're expecting, you know, anywhere from 500 to 800 guests. Uh, last year, obviously, with COVID, we saw dwindling in numbers. But, you know, with, um, you know, everyone coming out to play and the restrictions being lifted a little bit, we're expecting, you know, um, more participants this year, more community members to come out. Um, seventh year doing it in Boise, which is nuts. And like I said, this is an all ages free community event. Uh, a couple of changes from 2021. We're gonna bring in some additional lighting to the street, especially in the back alley. We brought some last year, uh, but we're gonna bring some more out this year. We've also increased um, the porta potties and the sanitation stations that are gonna be located um, where our restrooms are gonna be this year. Um, now, Ed, I, I think you mentioned, you know, you want to get away from biodegradable plastic cups. So what I can do is we have these, um, you know, they're, they're like the metal camping cups. And I think I have about 500 to a thousand of them. I got to check my storage, but we can bring those out and utilize those and those will be refillable. Um, so if that's something you guys would like to see, we can definitely make that happen. Um, this year we have live music. It's going to be Lounge on Fire, which is, you know, a local kind of staple to the Boise community, local band. Uh, our good friend DJ Stan and Monica will be uh, up there as well. And then Folk Hogan out of Salt Lake City. Um, as previous years, our beneficiary this year is going to be Protect Our Winners. Uh, they get a proceeds of our beer sales as well as our main production beer, uh, Pray for Pow. Um, so they will be our beneficiary for the event, uh, as well as, you know, we always invite local businesses and vendors to come out and get exposure for their organization or feature, you know, th th their products as well. And we offer that, you know, free of charge 
we're just happy to include them in, in the event. Uh, and then for the community, like I said, you know, it's, it's free to the community, all ages event, um, live music. We always have a bunch of fun giveaways. Um, and this year we'll be doing a, the first public screening of our athletes winter film project, which is always fun. Uh, here are some of the sponsors and, you know, partners and vendors that are be coming out. So we have Bogus Basin, McHugh Sports, Onslaught, which is a local ride team um, located in Boise, Boise, Matchstick Productions, which is the um, producer of our Winter Athletes film, Flawless Threads, which is a local um, vendor in Boise clothing company, Unholy as well as a local uh, clothing company, uh, Boise Adapted Sports, The Snow Science, and I'm talking to a few others uh, and just waiting for them to, to confirm their participation. So here are some, you know, de departmental concerns, um, you know, that we've addressed so far. The traffic control plan was uh, paid on 822. It's going to be the same that, you know, we've Kyle dialed in over the previous couple of years. So I don't believe we have any concerns from there, but I'll leave that up to John, um, you know, to see if he wants any edits. Uh, security, we're going to have 10 to 12 guards. We actually beefed up security a little more this year as well. Um, that's from Absolute Security of Idaho. Megan's always done our events for us. And we've never had any problems. Um, they're great at communicating. They'll be on radios, which our entire um, event staff, all the event leads at the event will have radios as well. So we'll be able to communicate amongst ourselves and the security team as well. Um, for alcohol, uh, we will be serving alcohol at the event, beer, um, and possibly liquor, if you guys uh, are okay with that. Uh, we have some canned cocktails that we would like to feature at the event. But for identifying guests that are 21 and over, security will identify them at the door and that they will be distinguished by a, uh, a wristband signifying that they're at the legal drinking age. And any, anybody who, um, you know, we may have questions on when they come up to purchase a drink. Uh, my staff is all, you know, licensed and uh, trained in identifying that. So they'll be, they'll just get a second check on those IDs to verify that guest's age if we have any concerns. Um, the alcohol catering permit was submitted and I believe it was approved on 824. Uh, so for food vendors, we're going to be featuring our Timberwell fruit truck again. Uh, CDH was notified and, um, of the event and that's a fully licensed food truck. Um, so they didn't have any concerns and we should be good to go on that. Uh, for the downtown association, uh, we will be notifying, you know, this week and next week we'll be hand delivering. Um, you know, notification letters to all the businesses so that that information can be cascaded down to the managers if they aren't uh, on site or available at the time uh, with my contact info. Um, and I will just communicate with them, you know, on a need to basis. Um, in the previous years, you know, we haven't had too much pushback. Um, and, you know, we've always tried to accommodate our neighbors because, you know, we're, we value them. Um, so public services, trash and recycling. Uh, we'll bring our own trash cans, our own black trash cans. And then I, we're gonna um, borrow some of the recycling bins from the city. So thank you for that. Um, and we will just be utilizing our 10 barrel dumpsters. Um, in the previous couple of years, we've used ours and then we've got permission from our neighbors, but um, with scheduling extra pickups at our um, restaurant location, you know, we haven't had any major issues with trash. And if there's any overflow, I can just take that myself and, and haul it to the dump. Uh, parking meters have been paid for and reserved for 9th Street, so that should be good to go. Thank you, Vince, for helping me through that. Uh, paramedics, the special events medical co plan was submitted on 8-11. Um, you know, we'll have basic first aid on site, and everyone will be in communication with radio, so if we need further assistance, we'll be able to communicate to paramedics and emergency services that way. Um, insurance, it's good to go, submitted, uh, you know, for ACHD, the city of Boise and Ada County Risk Management are all listed as additionally insured. Uh, fire, you know, we took out the trade show um, and special event permits. Uh, our main structures on site will be 10 by 10 and possibly a 10 by 20. Um, as far as vehicles on site, we do have a draft trailer that we plan to utilize, um, as well as a mobile trailer stage, the same mobile trailer stage as last year. And then just the other big thing would be that tow behind generator to power the trailer stage. Um, and those, and then the food truck, and those will be all the vehicles on site.
So if there's another permit, I, I think that changed a couple of years ago, but there's another one that fire would like to see us pull, or if you guys need any additional information or, you know, site map, site plan, you know, I can work with you on that. Uh, police, the citizen use permit was submitted on 824. And uh, last year, and I believe the year before, um, you know, we haven't had any issues at our event. So I believe the police um, were comfortable with us just utilizing Megan's staff and security team. But if, if you would like to see a police presence, uh, we're more than happy to contract a couple officers out for that event. And um, I'll just leave that up to your recommendation. Uh, the incident action plan was submitted and approved as well. Cool, and here's kind of the, the street, the, the road closure scenario. Um, was it the TCP um, for highway district there? It'll be done by specialty construction supply. They'll start laying that, I believe at 5 a.m., um, 4 or 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. And then we're gonna try to get everything off the street, you know, by, by Sunday. Um, in the last year, I think we had everything off the street by around midnight. And then I personally just pulled those street closure signs off 9th Street to open it up. And then specialty came, I think, early Sunday morning at that point and picked everything up. So everything was off the street, you know, by the time people start waking up and, and motoring around town. And then here's a site map for the event. This may change a little bit just based on if we get a couple additional vendors but the vendors will just be utilizing 10 by 10, um, you know, structures and they'll, they'll just be fit in on either side of the street there as, you know, our footprint uh, accommodates. I believe that is it. If anyone has any questions here, I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Jordan. Yeah, thank you great presentation. Good to see you again. Um, I expect to be double ID'd for my youthful appearance. <laughs> Yeah. this also year a lot of your previous performances at the event yeah we'll be keeping a close eye on that. <laughs> okay um the central district health did confirm that they received your information so we're good there and we'll go ahead and start around the room with john and debbie well hi hey so guys, control plan it has been reviewed and approved um if i haven't got the approved one to you kelly i'll get it and i'll also send a copy of it to you jordan and then um, I think we, we will require that all the traffic control is removed by peak hour on Monday morning. So make sure that uh, your traffic control company knows that they have to have it all off the road, completely off the road by, before um, 7 a.m., 6 a.m., I'd say, Monday morning. Monday morning. Okay, copy. But, and that's all I got. <laughs> Jordan, going forward, we'd like to discuss with you the possibility of shifting your event to either Jefferson or Bannock and see how that works in future for, for maybe a future event. This is not something that's locked in stone, but 9th Street is an arterial and it's a pretty important road. Um, and so we'd like to sit down and discuss with you the potential and, and how that would work for police and fire, uh, because fire is obviously the most important department. <laughs> but, uh, and, and just sit and discuss and see, is that something that might work for you or is it something that absolutely can't work for you? Yeah, with that, we're certainly open to that conversation. I think, you know, just in years past, we have rented out, um, parking lots, you know, and throwing the event in the parking lot. And then one, the one over by El Cora Shrine, that went under construction. So we weren't able to do it at there. And that's where we shifted to 9th Street. And then also it being so close to the pub, it's just easier to, uh, you know, drive traffic in the pub's direction and utilize the resources and power of the pub. Um, but, you know, Jefferson and Bannock are just as close. So we're definitely open to that conversation. Okay. I appreciate it. And we have to throw Jesse a bone once in a while, make him feel good, even though fire <laughs> department never really works. <laughs> Hi, Jordan. Uh, thanks for the call a couple of weeks ago. Um, when we left off, it sounded like you were going to look into renting a parking space for an extra dumpster, but it sounds like that's not the plan anymore. 
Yeah. I, I, after talking to the GM, you know, there wasn't a huge trash concern, you know, or of like overflow and extra waste generated from the event uh, with that, that pickup in the morning. Um, so they were comfortable of, you know, just utilizing our dumpsters. Okay. So <clears throat> I heard you offered to volunteer to take any extra to a landfill, but very courageous of you. Uh, <laughs> But what, what does that look like? Are you going to have a truck standing by that night to load up any extras? Or are you planning on leaving extras in the alley until things get, uh, until the next morning and you bring a truck in to take it up to the landfill? What does that look like? We have a truck and a sprinter van as well as we can, you know, utilize the draft trailer and just throw extra waste in there that the night of. Um, that way it's just nice and clean and it's nothing's overflowing and spilling out when they do that pickup. Um, so we will just... P- we plan on, you know, picking it up the night of and storing in one of our vehicles. We'll have multiple trucks, spinner vans, and the draft trailer on site that can store the trash. Okay. I, I can live with that as long as it's not uh, overflowing and spilling in the alley overnight yep. into the next morning. So um, also, I don't want to take too much of Ed's thunder here, but uh, A is for aluminum. So that's your best choice there with the cups. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely bring those down. I know we, we planned on you doing those last year, um, uh, during the COVID years. And then there were some health restrictions. I don't know if it pertained to Boise, but I know it pertained to Ben and some of our other home market locations where central district health didn't want us. If a customer used a cup and gave it back to us to fill again, they didn't want us to put it under the spigot essentially to refill it. So that was the concern with that. Okay. So we've been sitting on a couple thousand of them or a thousand of them since then. Yeah. The, the two plastic choices are, are trash. Biodegradable is better, but it's still trash. Thank you. Of course. Jordan, thank you for taking the calls and reserving the meters that you needed on ninth street. So we're good to go for parking. Cool. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Jordan. Um, I, Second, what John says about not closing 9th Street, it does affect our routes. So we'll detour around this year, but if we can get a bone as well, we'd appreciate that. (laughs) You got it. You got it. Thanks. Hey, Jordan. So we have been in communication about the neighbor notification, but I did also get a flag from our downtown maintenance team. They just brought to my attention historically, there's been a bit of um, like a site cleanup issue after the event. So kind of just to go off of what Conrad had said, just keep that in mind at the end of the night. And um, yeah, that's it for us. Copy. Thank you. Nothing from parks. Uh, we did get your medical plan a look good test. So nothing from medical. You're good to go. Thanks, Jordan. I got, I got a few things. Um, I see you applied for your special events permit through the fire department already. So that's looking good. Uh, you mentioned you're going to add some lighting to the alleys. Um, what, what kind of lighting is that going to be? I'm just curious. Right. So it'll be um, kind of like uh, not a light tower with a generator built in, but mm-hmm. it'll be battery operated. So it'll be, you know, on, on a tree essentially with the projectors going in okay. either direction. Okay. Down. Just be sure to position those in a fashion that it doesn't interfere with any fire access, okay. like in the middle of ninth or anything like that. And try to keep those alleys as open as possible. That's the biggest issue that I see. I, I think you had a good event last year and I don't think we had a problem with it. Uh, but again, the, the instructions for this year are the same. Uh, try to keep ninth as uncongested as possible, giving us access through the whole entire footprint. Um, the stage, um, if it's possible, could we position that to one side of the street or the other? It's, it's fine where it is on the footprint here, but if we could keep it to the side so we can get around it with our apparatus, that would be wonderful. Okay, let me, I'll reach out to the staging company and get a measurement on the stage, and then I can contact you directly if you like okay. and just okay. let you know those measurements. And, you know, yeah, if that'd be great. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, your food truck, um, I see that there's a permit for 2021 on file, but I don't see one for this year, 2022, that they've had there and that it's had its inspection. It's a yearly requirement. Do you know anything about that? I can reach out to them. I believe they, it has been inspected because um, I know they've been utilizing it. So, um, okay. They should have all the correct paperwork for it. I didn't see it on file. Maybe I'll do a deeper search, but uh, just double check on that. It's a blue sticker for 2022. Um, are you going to have any uh, heaters or open flames in the footprint? Um, 
personally, we will not, but I do know a vendor last year brought one of those, um, it's like a gas, uh, a gas campfire, you know, one of those gas, like kind of fire pits. I believe it was the adaptive sports, okay. um, for their booth. So if that's something you want me to tell them is, is no good, I can, I can let them know. How about just send me, if you find out you are having any type of heating device, so just send me the information on what type they are and where you're going to put them. And I think we'll be, they'll be okay. I just want to know what type they are. Okay. 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 Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Well, real quick, just let me go back. I just like to revisit the food truck. What is that um, specifically for fire or is that uh, central district health? It's for fire central for district. Fire. Health. They're supposed to tell you that the, uh, a fire department inspection is required gotcha. in addition to all their requirements. And it's a yearly thing. It's not good for a year. It's a yearly thing you got to do. And then where would I go to, is that something I file online? Like um, yep. Yep. through the portal? Okay, cool. If they yep. have same, way you, that, same way you applied for the special events permit. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Jordan, it's Jeff Nee here from the police. Uh, disregard the email I sent you just a few minutes ago. Uh, I was asking about the police services, if you were wanting us this year or not. Um, but if you're cool with uh, security, I am as well. Um, so if something changed, I know last year you got a little, little uh, in the end, they're trying to find security because of probably COVID, if I remember right. But um, we'll just let you guys do that again. I did see in your presentation about the alcohol, uh, you had a question about the fence. You're using a six foot chain link fence. You had a question mark about going smaller. Uh, city code just requires three feet height around any place you're serving or consuming the alcohol under the catering permit. So three feet is the, is the height. If you wanna go six, that's fine, but minimum three. Copy, cool. Yeah, I, I believe because I reached out to um, the, or the vendor that we rent the fence from and they only had the, the six foot chain link fence. Um, okay but be good to know on the three foot. Okay, yep, and if something should change uh, with needing police officers, let, let me know, but otherwise we'll just let security handle again this year. Awesome, thank you, sir. Okay. Hello, Jordan, it's Rachel. Good hey, to Rachel. see you again, and I'll just say this, you are a rock star, thank you so much. Appreciate oh. all the communication ahead of time. Um, you have answered all the questions that I would have noted and appreciate you putting together that packet. And so we'll get the final details and share that with any first responders that might have to come down to the event. Hopefully nothing will happen, but if they do, they know how to get in and out of your event. Um, other than that, I think we'll all just be taking tips from Kelly on how to participate in the event. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Thank you, Jordan. I do think that's why Maria is not here. She's working on her um, onesie snowsuit that can double as her Halloween costume for the night. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, you all have to dress up to get in. So oh, this year. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> we'll go online to um, Ed with Public Works. Hey, Jordan. Good to see you again. Welcome back. Uh, thanks, brother. Good seeing you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know what? One thing. Um, I can check with CDH. I don't think there's any restrictions as far as using reusable cups, you know, and the, and the spout and all that stuff. But like, let's just double check because I don't want to give any false information if that's actually not true. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, just like, you know, Connor is saying any kind of biodegradable or compostable cup, it's still trash. It's still better on like the landfill side of things, but it's still something that we want to get away from for events as much as possible. So yeah, um, any aluminum cans that you, you can serve are great. Any draft that people can bring their own cups in, or like you said, you've, you, you have all those metal, metal cups. I mean, that'd be awesome. And you guys always do such a great job. I'm not like overly concerned, but I don't, I definitely want to make this as sustainable as possible for you guys too. So I don't want to like, you know, throw, throw something at you that may not be able to be replicated later on. So like we can definitely talk and try to get a more, you know, a, a longer plan that is just, you know, more sustainable for you guys as well. Um, but other than, than that, it looks like you were requesting 10 recycling bins. So yes, sir. easy peasy. We'll definitely get those out for you. Um, and then are you going to use, if you do have to use like the uh, plastic or the biodegradable or compostable cups, you have signs that, are specifically said, you know, like plastic cups go in trash or something. I thought I saw that. 
Yeah, that's what we did last year uh, because okay. I believe, you know, you want to adjust aluminum, the, the can product mm -hmm. in the, the recycles. Recyclable. Correct. Yep. Yep. So that's yep. what we did last year is um, just put signs up because people just assume plastics, you know, recyclable, especially when they see. No, that. totally. So. Okay. Um, no, cool. That, that'd be great to put those back up. And yeah, I'm assuming just aluminum and then uh, cardboard might be the only kind of two big recyclable. Material. Yeah, not, not too much on the cardboard. Um, okay. Yeah, not too much. But what I will do Ed, is all our variants that we can serve in, you know, cans, I'll make sure to bring the can product out. And then, you know, just supplement that with, you know, some draft options, but we'll, we'll try to, you know, rely on the can product as much as we can. No, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I, I like that. And Jordan, that's, that's all I've got. Have a great event. And um, I'll just shoot you an email, kind of talk about some, some okay. future stuff. Cool. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. BC Detman with Boise Fire. may have stepped away. Uh, Sydney with risk management. Hi, Jordan. We're all good with insurance and I signed off on your event this morning. Awesome. Thank you, Sydney. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Jordan. Great to see you again. Look forward to having the event back. And if you need anything, let us know. All right. Thank you guys. You guys have a good day. You too. Okay. Also online, we have light the night walk for uh, Leukemia and Lymphoma Foundation, Becca? Of course, doing this for so long. <laughs> Hello, right. everyone. Hi, I'm Becca. Um, I am from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I'm joining you from Los Angeles. I'm not there in Boise. Um, I'm actually from our national event and meeting services team, so um, I'll be handling logistics, and then we have our local team there that is handling on the groundwork. So um, I'll be presenting today. So I'll just um, share for a moment. Um, pardon me. Okay. Perfect. So um, Light the Night is um, our signature fall event that we have um, for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, we basically, um, so just, you know, when someone you hear love, love, hears the word you have cancer. Um, we, I think we've all probably, um, experienced that it's one of the darkest moments of anybody's life. Um, so at light the night, our aim is to bring light to the darkness of cancer through research and cures. So it is our community walk event and it is a fundraising event. We do about 113 of these nationwide. Um, from end of September until mid-November. And this is our Boise event. So thank you so much for having us. Um, so we, um, this is just a few pictures from some of our past events. Um, there's a lantern lighting ceremony. Um, there are fireworks at the end of the night. Um, the lanterns don't, everybody always has the question whether or not they get, they're the ones that get lit on fire and um, let it go into the sky. They're not, they're battery operated. Um, so those are our lanterns. Um, just a quick event overview. So we'll be at Cecil D. Andrus Park on October 13th. We're expecting around about a, a thousand guests. I think across the board, everyone knows that, you know, that guest count is kind of hit and miss a lot of times lately um, after these last couple of years. So we'll see how that actually goes, but we're expecting about a thousand. Um, and, you know, this benefits Boise and the surrounding regions, cancer patients, survivors, and caregivers. Um, so quick rundown of our event timeline. Um, we have Idaho tents and events setting up the majority of our rentals um, starting at 9 a.m. on October 12th in the park. Um, then day of event, um, 8 a.m., LLS staff and volunteers will arrive to set up. Sorry, just realized I don't have it on here. Um, Valiant Productions will be handling our AV portion of our event. Um, so they'll be showing up about 8 a.m. as well to begin set up for their portion, um, all of our staging and our general AV. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we have participant arrival at 6.30 p.m. Um, the actual ceremony starts at 7.45. Um, at eight o'clock, the walk commences. Um, that takes about 30 minutes-ish. 
Um, and then 8.45, guests will start to arrive back at the um, 8.30, 8.45 back at the park. Um, fireworks will immediately fire um, when we expect about um, half of our guests back to the park itself, then we'll begin firing. Um, that fireworks show is about three minutes, so not very long at all. Um, once that's all done, the event wraps up, we clean up and um, hopefully staging and AV should be clear of everything around 11 to midnight. Um, and then Idaho tents and events will be removing the next morning, first thing in the morning. Um, this is our site map. Apologies if it's a little difficult to see, it is to scale. So um, there, it does kind of get difficult uh, to get everything all in one place. Um, apologies also, there is a road closure to the left side of the Y on Capitol Boulevard. Um, we have that on our traffic control map. I just didn't get it on this map. Um, so we have about 16 um, 10 by 10 tents. Um, we also have about three 10 by 20s. Our stage is an SL100 mobile stage, and that is about a 20 by 24 foot um, uh, footprint. Um, directly in front of that, there is a beam that we use. We call it the survivor beam um, with some feather flags surrounding it. There will be cable ramps across that to ensure that nobody trips over anything. Um, it's not anything as large as like a, a star tracker or anything like that. It's just a, a simple stage light that gets shot into the sky. Um, and then we have um, six regular porta potties, two ADA porta potties. Um, we have a, um, a 25 foot um, inflatable remembrance pavilion. It's uh, an inflatable dome. It's kind of like a like an inflatable yurt, I think of it as. <laughs> And then um, we have um, on the right side, we have um, uh, two eight far foot, or I'm sorry, eight yard um, trash. Um, there's a trash receptacle and a recycle receptacle. Um, we have um, on the very top, we have two food trucks secured there. We're hoping to have one last one, um, but as of right now, we have two food trucks secured. Um, and there's a couple other various areas, a children's initiative wall, which isn't like a structure or anything. It's just kind of a, um, an activation where people can write notes to children that will then be sent to a nearby hospital. Um, and then we have our walk route. So guests will depart um, through our, and I will, sorry, I'll go back to our, we also have a, um, an inflatable arch that will start our walk route um, on the top side of the Y on Capitol. Um, our walk route um, will begin there at the top of Capitol Boulevard, turning right on West Jefferson, um, turning right again on Third Street, um, dropping down to Idaho Street, um, turning right on that, and then up to Eighth, again right on Bannock, and then back into the park. Um, as far as our emergency medical plan, um, we will have first aid tents on site in the park. Um, guests will be uh, directed to various locations where we have that available. Um, and then from there, um, everything is routed through 911. Um, we have the closest hospital is St. Luke's Boise, but correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I'm not there on site, so forgive me. Um, and then we have staff communication via radio and established phone tree. Any other sort of emergency situations, we would route through that phone tree. Um, and uh, if there's any sort of like weather emergencies, unfortunately, we do live in the time where we have, um, you know, a risk of um, other kind of emergencies. So we route things through that appropriate communication plan. Um, we have ADA compliant porta potties for our accessibility plan. All food and beverage areas will be free from obstruction and available to all guests. Um, and then volunteers will be on site to direct any of our guests. We do, we are very cognizant of the fact that, you know, we are dealing with a lot of attendees that could potentially be going through cancer treatment at the time. Um, so there are accessibility concerns. We do walk the route in advance to make sure there are no blockages around the route, around the site. Um, and to make sure everything is accessible for those guests. Um, trash and recycling plan, as I mentioned, we have an eight yard 
trash dumpster and an eight yard trash recycling dumpster um, on the site. And then that'll be delivered Thursday morning and picked up Friday. Um, we've placed that on Sixth Street um, near the corner of Jefferson. Um, the meters will be capped and a permit has been obtained. Um, and then um, 15 trash or, um, and recycling boxes have been requested and um, all staff will monitor trash disposal before, during and after event. Um, we have a team of one adult volunteer who will be monitoring trash uh, with a team of 10 youth volunteers uh, before and after the event. And then the adult volunteer will be monitoring that throughout the event and then assigning specific needs during the event. Um, we don't have a whole lot of trash that happens during the event. Um, mainly it's coming from the food truck area, which you know obviously will monitor that area. Other than that, it's usually really the prep as we're opening up boxes for supplies and things like that. Um, so the main part of it is setup and breakdown. Um, so as far as sound entertainment, entertainment and site setup, um, the we have a curated family-friendly national playlist that we use that'll be amplified throughout the event space from about 6.15 prior, 15 minutes prior to guest arrival to 6.45 when the lantern ceremony will begin. Um, and then 7.45, obviously the lantern ceremony begins. There are speakers on stage. There is no band or DJ or anything like that. Um, it's just low underscores throughout that event. Um, and then a walk commencement song that will, will occur. Um, during the fireworks portion, there is um, a three minute curated family friendly playlist um, with a finale voiceover that goes during that time. So just three minutes. Um, as far as our remembrance pavilion. So um, this is a 25 foot inflatable structure. Um, basically guests will enter this structure um, and write notes to their loved ones that they have unfortunately lost in the battle against cancer um, and post those on these um, six foot pop-ups that we have. Um, that'll be weighted with about 500 pounds um, minimum of weight. Um, so it will be definitely very secure. Um, and then LLS staff will be going door to door in affected areas to be notified to notify all businesses of potential impacts one week prior to the event. Um, and the mobile eating and drinking license, um, uh, basically a list of food truck vendors as we have them right now and associated permits have been sent to the environmental health specialist community and environmental health department um, and a notification of event has been submitted as well. This is our traffic control plan. Um, we have two closures, well, two areas of closure. Um, we have the right and left side of the Y on Capitol Boulevard, and then um, the right and left side of Jefferson Street between 6th and 8th that will be closed. Um, my understanding is that Jefferson will be closed later in the day and um, Capitol Boulevard will be closed at 8 a.m. Um, so that we have space for that staging that we have. Um, uh, for parking, all of the meters directly surrounding the park have been secured to be capped for the entire entirety of the event day. Um, the metered spots will be used for staff, um, those need, guests in need of accessible parking, key VIP guests, um, and as well as load in or load out for various vendors. Um, the rest of the guests have been directed to use available sitting parking for all general parking needs, and we've messaged that they um, that public transportation is suggested and carpooling as well whenever possible. So that is it for me. I apologize if I have forgotten anything or if there's anything I left out. Forgive me. Uh, this event has happened many times in the past. Our last event happening in 2019. Um, but I am brand new to this particular event. Um, so I apologize if I've missed anything. Thank you. Thank you, Becca. No, that was great. Um, I know that you were a little bit crunched on time the last couple of weeks. So we appreciate you getting everything submitted, uh, putting together a great presentation and your event's gonna be here before we know it. So um, <laughs> If you could send the list of your food trucks to me as well, the one that you sent to the, the health department, so I can just verify that they're properly licensed with the city. 
that would be great. And then I'll turn it over to ACHG. Hi, Becca. I think we have everything we need. Um, I'll double check and I'll reach out to you if there's anything else I need. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Becca, this is John with ACHD. Are you going to have Boise Police escort the, the walk itself? Yes, I've actually just gotten notification. We do definitely have React on board. They have a scheduled, and then we do have Boise City Police there suggesting about six motorcycles. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Becca. Uh, I just wanna thank you for taking care of all the trash and recycling needs prior to this meeting. Um, I'm, I'm good to go, we're all set, thank you. Hi, Becca, this is Vincent Parking. Uh, we are set to go. We're good with everything that we need around the park. Hi, this is also with Valley Regional Transit. I appreciate you sharing to use public transportation and I'll have our communications manager reach out to you so he can share on our social media anything for your event to promote that. Hi, Becca. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, I just saw your email come through. Unfortunately, a list is not something that the DBA typically provides, but it sounds like you're going to have boots on the ground to be able to do that a week before. So that's the best route for us. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Hi, Becca. You guys, your team has done so great planning this and coming back from 2019. So I don't have any questions. Um, we'll send forestry in ahead of time to make sure that branches are clear for your guys' dome. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Becca. It's Cameo with the paramedics. Um, I sent you an email this morning with a medical form. So if you just want to put the information that you had in your PowerPoint on that form and email it back to me. If you're confused by some of the questions, just call me and I'll walk you through it because it's pretty simple, but some of them um, you may not understand what they mean. So just give me a sure. call and I can help you with it. Wonderful, thank you. Hi Becca, this is Jesse with Boise Fire. Thank you for the presentation. Um, just a couple of questions here. I see that you uh, have applied for your fireworks display permit and it looks it looks good as far as I can see. Um, I just wanna make sure that uh, you're clear uh, that you're gonna need to help out Western Display. Um, as soon as they get the fireworks onto the street, there's gotta be a hundred foot area that's cordoned off so spectators cannot get near them or if there's an accident they go off nobody gets hurt so which which will include shutting down those sidewalks and as soon as those are on the street I just want to remind you of that so be prepared to help western display out with that okay sure absolutely we'll make sure there are volunteers assigned to that okay perfect and then um I know in the past you've applied for a uh, tent permit you said 2019 was the last time you had this event, mm -hmm. um, Idaho tents and events, they set up all your structures, but your, your event is pretty big, uh, as far as the size of it. And so we're going to require a separate special events permit instead of the tent permit. So just okay. Idaho tents and events is, is used to doing this. Just let them know to file it under a special events permit through the fire department instead of that tent permit. Okay. And then I think you heard in the last presentation about the food trucks. Um, I I'd like a list of your food trucks as well. And just so I can double check to make sure they have their uh, fire department inspections, they have their, they'll be issued blue stickers uh, when they pass their inspections and, and please double and triple check on that because we'll, we'll shut them down if they don't have their, their inspections and, and we don't want to do that. So, but that's everything Perfect. I have. Thank you for your presentation. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Becca, Matt Kamalenko with Boise Police. We're all set. Uh, we'll forward you a staffing agreement. Uh, but other than that, um, look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Hi, Beck. It's Rachel with Emergency Preparedness. Uh, wonderful presentation. Also, thank you for reaching out. The only question I have right now is, have you been in touch with the Capitol about your setup on Jefferson and your fireworks fencing? I have not. Sorry, okay. I apologize. No worries. Um, we can get the contact sent over to you by email. You just need to check in with them. Um, when we do have fireworks down there, we also need to have their input to make sure that they're not getting their driveways blocked, especially for the governor's detail right there. And it is during the week. So we're not quite sure what's going on there. So you just need to check in with them and make sure that that space is available for you. 
Um, and then just we'll need to ensure that whatever's going on on Jefferson, if we do have an emergency, that we can get fire apparatus on Jefferson if needed so we can't block that whole roadway. Okay, understood. And that is all I have. Greatly appreciate it and we'll get you that contact. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll move online to Ed with Public Works. Hi, Becca. Um, just a couple of quick things. Um, so yes, we already emailed again. Thank you for reaching out early. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll talk with you offline as far as um, what you'll need for trash boxes and recycling bins just for any overflow. I will email you um, our, our new recycling signs. So if you can either print those or somehow put them like on the recycling containers them, themselves just to help the attendees, you know, put the right stuff in the right bin. Um, and then also, do you know how many food trucks you'll have? As of right now, we only have two secured, but okay. um, we're hoping for one more. Okay. Well, yeah, great. I see that you checked the, uh, that you'll electronically distribute the vendor low waste guide. So if you could just make sure and get those to any and all vendors, just helps them try to uh, decrease their overall waste. Um, but other than, than that, we'll get you what you need, excited for the event. And if you have any questions, let, let me know, but that's all I've got. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, BC Detman with Boise Fire. asleep <laughs> sorry we had to step off to okay. manage some work situations Perfect. we'll circle back around to him if we need anything and um, captain tapper can reach out to him as well uh sydney with risk management we're all good on our end thank you thank you sydney becca i know you have a, a little bit of a list there um, feel free to send anything to me or the special events email comes to me as well. So um, instead of having to track down and send five different documents to five different people, I am happy to collect those and disperse them to the team. If you do have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. We're here to help and um, we'll be in touch after the meeting with the contact information for the state and follow up from there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all your help. Everyone has been incredibly helpful. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yep. And we're excited to have the event back. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, as far as pending approvals, we do have the C-Spot Walk event this weekend that is has been approved and is set to go off. Uh, the Harrison Classic Kids Run is a week from Sunday. So I think um, just a couple of last minute things there to check on. So if you do need anything um, issue-wise or communication-wise that I can help with, please let me know. Um, the other thing that I assumed we had talked about, but um, we'll have to take offline, but the um, Halloween on Harrison, John, we did get your email. I will circle back around today internally um, just to keep that conversation moving, but it does sound like we're moving forward with it as far as ACHD was concerned, getting resources from police and then the okay from the city. Okay. Anyone have any Anything else that they need to discuss? All right, thank you, we're adjourned. <laughs>